Hey there, in this video we are going to look at adding fractions. So we are going to start with what happens when we have two fractions that we're adding with the same denominator. So again, same denominator would mean the same bottom number. So we are going to go ahead and just add the top numbers, which are the numerators. So in this case, that would be A and B. And that's going to be your new numerator. And then our denominator, C, is going to remain the same um, when we add those numerators. So that's how we add fractions. So to give you an example, we have 2 sevenths plus 4 sevenths. Notice the denominators are already the same. That's the first thing we want to check. We see these are the same, so we're going to go ahead and write our uh, final answer, our sum, as a denominator of 7. And then we just combine the top two numerators, which would be 2 and 4. 2 plus 4 gives us 6, and our answer would be 6 over 7. Now we are going to look at how we add fractions when we have different denominators. So there are four steps that we will take. First, we'll find the LCD, which is our least common denominator. This is the lowest natural number that both denominators are divisible by. So for example, in this first one, we have 1 half plus 1 sixth. 2 and 6 we see are not the same number, so we do not have common denominators right now. We need to turn each of those fractions into fractions that have the same denominator. So we want to turn, in, uh, turn the denominators into the same number somehow. Um, and we are going to use multiplication to do that, and we'll talk about that in a second. So step two will be to multiply each numerator and denominator in each fraction by whatever number will turn that denominator into the LCD. And then we just add like um, we did in the last example where we have common denominators. And then we always want to simplify the resulting fraction if possible. So let's take a look at this first example. We see 1 half plus 1 sixth. And again, 2 and 6 are different denominators. So we are going to look at um, I typically will look at the bigger number, the bigger denominator, and I like to think of that one as um, can I turn the smaller denominator into that denominator with multiplication of a whole number, a natural number. So 2 times something, will that give me 6? Yes, 2 times the whole number 3 will turn it into 6. So I can go ahead and do that. So 2 times 3 would give me 6 as the denominator here. But if I multiply the bottom of the fraction by 3 to keep it the same value overall, we need to also do that same exact thing to the top. So we're going to multiply the top by 3, which will turn 1 into 3. So 3 over 6 is the same as 1 half. We just multiply the 1 half by 3 on top and bottom. And when we do it on top and bottom, we actually are not changing the value, the decimal value of 1 half. Um, 3 over 6 and 1 over 2 will both come out to be 0.5 if I wrote it as a decimal. So it means the same thing. It's just this is written with a denominator of 6, which makes it easier to add with the 1 sixth that we have over here. So 1 sixth and 3 sixths now have the same denominator. So we are going to go ahead and just add them like we did on the previous example, where we just add across the top, which 3 plus 1 gives us 4. And then the denominator stays the same. We do not add the denominators. It just stays uh, as 6. Now, 4 over 6, we can simplify a little bit further because 4 and 6 are both even, which means they are at least divisible by 2. You could check to see if they're divisible by anything else higher than 2, but you'll find that the only natural number or the only whole number that 4 and 6 are divisible by would be 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And 6 divided by 2 is 3. So our final simplified answer would be 2 thirds. Now looking at number 2, we have 2 thirds plus 4 fifths. Notice again, we do not have common denominators. So these denominators are different. So what we want to go ahead and do again is figure out what fraction can I turn these into? What denominator can I turn the 3 and the 5 into? Where I multiply the first fraction by a number on top and bottom and the second fraction by a different number on top and bottom to turn those denominators into the exact same number. So we want these two numbers to be identical so that we can just add the fractions together. So look at the bigger one, 5. 3, unfortunately, there's not a whole number that we can multiply 3 by to give us 5 like we could on the last one. 
So what I want you to think about is the multiples of five. So think about five. If I have five and then I go to the next number or add five essentially or multiply by two, however you want to look at it, that would be 10. 10, unfortunately, is not divisible by three. Then go to the next number, 15. 15 is divisible by 3, so that's going to be our least common denominator. So 15 is going to be the number on the bottom in each of these. So if I multiply, if I look to see what I need to multiply each fraction by, that's going to tell me what I need to multiply the top and the bottom by to turn it into a denominator of 15. So on this first one, 2 thirds, 3 can become 15 with multiplication if I multiply by 5. And the two on top, I can multiply by five. Two times five gives us 10. And again, three times five gave us that 15, our common denominator. So 10 over 15 is the same as two thirds. It's just written with a denominator of 15 instead of three. Now we're going to do the same thing with four fifths. So four fifths, I need to turn the five into a 15. To do that with multiplication, and it's always with multiplication. To do that with multiplication, we multiply by three. If I multiply the denominator by 3 to get 15, I need to multiply the numerator by 3 as well. 4 times 3 is 12. So now I have 10 fifteenths plus 12 fifteenths. And now I have the same denominator, so I can go ahead and just add across the top. 10 plus 12 is 22 over 15. So now we're going to talk about an alternative method. So there is another option if you don't want to go through the process of trying to figure out what the least common denominator is. As long as you have a common denominator, it technically does not have to be the lowest one for this to work, for us to be able to add two fractions together. So the process um, for multiplying um, what we multiply by in this method, will be a little bit different than how we approached the last method. So looking at our steps here, if we are uncertain about the LCD, we can always use this formula here. So we can multiply the original denominators together. So whatever these two denominators are, we can just multiply them together and they become our new um, common denominator. If we do that, we're still going to follow the same process in terms of um, multiplying each fraction on top and on bottom to turn it into that new denominator. It's just not necessarily going to be the lowest common denominator, or the least common denominator. It will just be a common denominator in general. Otherwise, it really is the same as what we just did in the last example. So let's take a look at the same first problem we did on the last page, but we're going to use this method this time. So instead of looking at what is the least common denominator, which when we did that on the last page, it was six. And so we turn this into three sixths and we add one sixth and that gave us four sixths, which simplified to two thirds. So that's just a quick refresher on what we saw on the last page. We are going to actually look at it a different way. So instead of worrying about what is the least common denominator, you could take these two denominators, two and six, and multiply them together. Two times six gives us 12. So that is going to be our new denominator. So if that is our new denominator, then we are going to turn that first fraction into a fraction with a denominator of 12. And we'll turn the second fraction into a denominator of 12. If I'm looking at this first fraction, one half, to turn that into a fraction with 12 on the bottom, we have to think, what did I multiply 2 by to turn it into 12? So if I multiply that by 6, then I need to also multiply the top by 6 to make this fraction still be the same value. So 1 times 6 is 6. 6 over 12 is still 1 half. It's just written with a denominator of 12. And then additionally, we would need to do the same thing with 1 6. So 1 6, we need to look at how did I turn 6 into 12 with multiplication? That's going to be times 2. So 6 times 2 is 12. And then we do the same thing on top. So we'll do 1 times 2. 1 times 2 is 2. And when we do that, now we have common denominators. So we see that the 12 here and the 12 here are common denominators. So we can go ahead and we can add these fractions. So we just add across the top. 6 plus 2 is 8 over 12. 
Remember the denominator stays the same. Eight over 12, we can simplify further because they are both divisible by four. And if you didn't catch that and you started by just dividing by two, that's okay. You would just go one time more by dividing by two again um, to get our final simplified answer on this problem. So if you see that they're both divisible by four, not just by two, then you only have to do it once. So eight divided by four is going to give us two. 12 divided by four will give us three. And that is our final answer. And that is the same answer we got when we did it um, with the other method where we got six as the denominator and we turned it into three sixths and one sixth and we got four sixths and then we divided to simplify it to two thirds. So we did still get the same answer with either method. So in summary, we have adding fractions with the same denominator. We are just going to add across the top and leave the common denominator. Now, if we have different denominators, remember we have the LCD method where we can choose to find the least common denominator, which is the lowest number possible as the denominator, or we can just multiply the denominators together and make that the common denominator. So it's still really the same method. It's just, are we finding the lowest one or are we just multiplying the denominators together in order to get a common denominator? Either way works. It's whatever you are more comfortable with.